And this is hashtag Lady Speak. And this is a political commentary for CCU for girls or men alike. Um, where me, Ana Doshianu, and Taylor Shark. We are going to be talking about different types of social events or political commentary happening in our world, in the United States, um, pretty much whatever floats our boat that week. So <laughs> there's going to be a new topic happening every week. Um, as a little disclaimer, CCU is non-dominational um, and CCU does not affiliate with one political party. This is just our own opinions where we are going to be giving both the pro side and con side based off of evidence that we ourselves have researched um, and then at the end give a biblical perspective so you can make your own opinion um, regardless of what we say and what we say does not correlate to CCU's thoughts, beliefs, or ideas by any means. And so with that, let's get started. Taylor, what is the topic today? Biden's new student loan forgiveness plan. So a few weeks ago, the Biden administration came out and said that they will be forgiving $20,000 of debt if you went to college on Pell Grants and that they'd be giving $10,000 of forgiving debt if you didn't receive Pell Grants. And the forgiveness only applies to those earning less than $125,000. So we're gonna get into the pro side of this. So for the pro side, as a little bit more of a background, the Biden administration during the campaign for presidency actually promised to provide the student debt relief. On Wednesday, a few weeks ago, the administration actually followed through on the promise um, brought on by the pandemic to repay the loans because of the economic crisis. And so since 1980, the total cost of both four-year public and four-year private education has nearly tripled even after inflation. That is directly from the White House administration. Um, Pell Grants covered 80% of the costs and the other third were covered by um, MPWs. And so according to the Department of Education Analysis, a typical undergrad student with loans graduates which with about $25,000 in debt. So over 45 million borrowers and nearly one third of borrowed people have debt but no degree. And the White House states that students cannot complete the degree because the cost was too high. Um, and so the Biden administration put forth a three part plan that consisted of providing targeted debt relief to address the financial harms um, of the pandemic and as well as to fulfill the campaign promise. And so the first part of this plan was that the Department of Education will provide up to $20,000 in debt cancellation to Pell Grant recipients with loans held by the Department of Education and up to $10,000 in debt cancellation to non-Pell Grant recipients. Um, now, Taylor will go on a little more into what a Pell Grant is, but borrowers are eligible for this relief if their individual income is less than $125,000, $250,000 for married couples. So no high income individual or high income household in the top 5% of incomes will benefit from this action. So to ensure a smooth transition to repayment and prevent unnecessary defaults, the pause on federal student loan repayment will be extended through December 31st of this year, 2022, and borrowers should expect to resume payment in January of 2023. And again, that is directly from the White House. So if you don't like what I said, take it up with that. Um, the second part of the plan consisted of to make student loans more manageable by cutting the monthly payments in half for undergrad loans and fixing the broken public service loan forgiveness program by providing a rule that borrowers who have worked in a nonprofit, military, or federal, state, tribal, or local government to receive appropriate credit towards its loan forgiveness. And then lastly, the third part is to protect future students and taxpayers by reducing the cost of college College and holding schools accountable when they hike up the process since inflation has caused um, private education and even state college education to rise up the cost of tuition and housing prices for um, getting your degree. Yeah, so getting into the cons of this, many people who are against this plan are saying that it's just a slap in the face to veterans who have worked honorably 
to get their college paid for it, and by canceling student loans, it only helps the winners. So people who have attended college, especially graduated from college, are typically set for a huge increase in their lifetime earning. Uh, the average person with a bachelor's degree will earn an estimate of $1.2 million over their lifetime than someone who only has a high school diploma. About 25% of college loans belong to someone who has taken them for a graduate degree, which their earnings rise between 1.6 and $3.1 million more. There's no reason that people on such a good financial position, such as these graduates, should not repay taxpayers. Uh, this is also a slap in the face to parents who have worked hard for their children to attend school without having to take out any loans. Uh, people who choose to go to trade schools or no schools at all, as well as those who choose cheaper schools and choose to live off campus or commute so that they will not graduate with any debt. And it also is the slap in the face, like I said, to the veterans who fought our war and risked their lives to get their college paid for. Um, all who are now having to pay the debts of those who are now rich doctors, lawyers, and engineers. Uh, this is also a huge cost to taxpayers that the government is not wanting to tell us right now. Uh, the $10,000 plan will cost taxpayers, us, the people who funded these student loans, whether they wanted to or not, an estimated of $1 trillion. And while we think inflation is bad right now, uh, there will be inflation on these prices of higher education. During the 2021 and 22 school year, there was an 86% increase in tuition, fees, room, and board for private universities, and a 118% increase for public institutions since the year of 1990. Uh, much research has shown that for every dollar increase in subsidized student loans, colleges raise their prices 60 cents. This will continue to increase with the cancellation of student loans. In addition, debt like this is always considered income and is almost always taxable. This will now be in the hands of state legislators. And most importantly, this is unconstitutional. The Constitution gives Congress, not the president, the power of pursue. A president canceling up to $1.6 trillion would be the rank of violation of that power. The federal government only has the specific powers given to them by the Constitution and funding education either directly or through loans is not among them. Mass cancellation is an unconstitutional giveaway of taxpayer money to the people who arguably need it the least. And as we move into the biblical perspectives, many are correlating Jesus to the student forgiveness plan that Jesus essentially has done the same thing, but Jesus has died for all of our sins accounted for, not just a select few of the population, and he took on the burden himself fully, not dispersed it to many others. We can see that in 1 John 2, 2, he is a proprietation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world, and that is from ESV. But this type of biblical comparison is not fair and unbiblical in this instance. Our sins and money forgiveness are just mere comparison compared to the burden that our Lord has graced us with. Um, and so with that being said, regardless of whether you are pro or con on this issue, we urge you to think for yourself as to what this means for you, whether you have taken out loans for college or not, or even think about what this might have to do um, in the future and how you know more administrations are gonna use this um, to counteract um, their future legislation, how that may even impact our future families or kids in their college careers, um, wherever that may take us. So just to describe a little what a Pell Grant is, it is a subsidy by the U.S. federal government which provides for students who need it to pay for college. So federal Pell Grants are limited to students with financial need who have not earned their first bachelor's degree or who are enrolled in a certain post-baccalaureate programs through participating institutions. Well, that concludes our segment for today, but as always, we encourage you guys to research on your own and we can't wait to see you back next week.